Fearscape Media Network, exploring the unknown, one podcast at a time. Fearscape, a paranormal podcast, part of the Fearscape Media Network. Prepare to be spooked. <laughs> New episodes every Wednesday on all major podcast platforms. Find out more at fearscapepodcast.com. Fearscape Media Network is your new home for everything weird and enlightening. Check out podcasts and YouTube shows covering content from discussions on horror films to the paranormal to meditation. Find out more at fearscapemedia.com. Coming to you from nowhere. A suburb of parts unknown. Your ghoulish hosts for an evening of terror. Stefan Gearhart and Lance Wayne. The Misters of the Dark. <laughs> Good evening, dear friends. Welcome to another terrifying episode of Misters of the Dark. As always, we're beaming directly to you from nowhere, a suburb of parts unknown. I'm your head mister, Stefan Gearhart. And my co-mister, the man with no name, Lance Wayne, is running a little behind on account of our infestation problem. Yeah, you see in other parts of this big blue marble, you might experience mass swarms of, you know, cicadas, groups of pigeons soiling your newly washed car, or even the occasional storm of frogs. But here in our neck of the woods, though, we have a slightly more, how should I say, uh, demanding problem? Yes, that's right. Every year around this time, the undead all rise from the earthly tombs and throw their annual thriller in the villa zombie mixa. You know, it's all fun and games at first. There's volleyball, surfing, ripping out the entrails of a priest. But after you've gone through a whole village of screaming country folk, you've got to know when to stop. So I sent Lance off to see if he could find anybody with a pulse that could maybe help us with our dilemma. And, uh, uh, hey, look, here he comes now. Back, back, you brain dead beast. I told you, I already gave it the office. Out, 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 out. <sighs> it's hell out there. Yeah, well, it's not gonna be much better in here if you didn't find us somebody to take care of these monsters. You shut your face. I got someone. Oh, that's just like you. I bust my balls after all. After. Uh, are, are we on? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what? Hello, dear friends. I'm your co mister, the man with no name. I already did the intro. Oh. So enough. Lance, I'm tired of this. Shut up. Who did you find? Relax. Sky has previous experience with just this sort of thing. And he was one of the few people in the village that wasn't, you know, dead. Oh, oh, wow. Look at him out there, man. He's really mowing them down. Told you. Now I invited him in to discuss the matter of payment. Now, Lance, you know we won't be able to pay this guy. Shut up. Already got it figured out. Ah, here he is. <laughs> Holy shit! That's Santiago Cirillo from Walking Dead! <laughs> Alright, holy moly, yeah, Lance, this is Santiago, this is the guy I was telling you about. What? Man. Yeah, he's from Walking Dead and all kinds of cool stuff, man. And, uh, hey, hey, while you're here, Santiago, can we, uh, just go ahead and talk to you for a little bit? Um, uh, I, well, it's just an apocalypse and a lot of zombies, but <laughs> why not? Well, well, yeah, I mean, it happens once a year, so who cares? <laughs> yeah. Am I right? Am I right? Uh, they're big mixer. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, man, uh, thanks for thanks for joining us here on Misters of the Dark. I'm super excited. I, I've, I got to talk to you once before on my other show. Um, you have another show? Yeah, I do. With You're uh, shading on me? Yeah, with Damien Deadman himself, Josh Rutledge. Uh, <gasps> yeah, got to do that. So we got to talk about some cool paranormal stuff, but I want to talk about the horror stuff because not only Santiago is a sweet-ass actor, um, and knows our good buddy Christopher Maggard, but is also a writer. I swear to God, yeah, oh. yeah. Your brain, your brain works, isn't that right? It does. It's an extra <laughs> part of the brain that just <laughs> loves to tell tales. <laughs> well, before we get in talking about your um, acting stuff, let's talk about the the writing stuff that you've done because um, this is pretty interesting. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, man. Um, me, I writing scripts and movies and TV shows is what I do on the side. And I just put them in the vault. You could say it ain't the Mickey Mouse vault. I promise you that. But it is <laughs> literally a vault that I, I have a hard drive in. And I decided to bring out a uh, script. And the script is called Zombified, that headhunter, which was pretty good. I pitched it to Hollywood and certain people and kind of certain parts got stolen and were put in a show and i kind of let it go for five oh six years and then yeah that man it, yeah it happens a lot I, pr I promise you and and it kind of kind kind of you know it drains you down because you know you don't have the big lawyers they do and all that stuff and then you got to connect the numbers and connect the people but anyway i I met up with Kendra Souter, who's a horror author out of North uh, Carolina. And um, out of the blue, I was at a Comic-Con, man, and I picked up one of her books, and I couldn't put it down. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Next thing you know, I'm owning like five or six of her books. And, that, and then it just popped in my head, hey, look at the script. So I gave her the script, and she calls me back cussing at me. He's like, what the hell's your problem? And I'm like, what? She goes, you do not leave this not finished why did you make me read this when it's not finished so um long story short man i said you know can you make this a book she goes uh yeah and uh, we put it out on the market as a soft copy and some downloads and we didn't i didn't expect anything big i just wanted to see how much legs and care could carry and man it took off it was selling like maybe a thousand copies in a month and oh god um, yeah, dude, we had it everywhere. We had it online. We had it everywhere. And it caught the eye of some great uh, person of that, a good friend of mine that works for Sci-Fi Channel. And he goes, dude, oh, cool. I bumped into this book and I'm like, uh, what the heck? Is that? And I said, dude, and I explained the whole situation. So before this uh, COVID stuff, it was literally sitting and I had a meeting with one of the executives from uh, Netflix. And we oh, were going to make wow. it a TV show. Dude. And um, oh wow, yeah. So yeah, man, it got it got pushed down because of the COVID. I mean, it's still on the table and so forth. But <laughs> people so wanted many the projects. second one, man. Yeah. It just it got crazy. I got fans going, "Where's no? Where's the second book? And how can you leave this in a cliffhanger and not help your fans?" And, <laughs> I mean, I got people pissed off for the last four years, and I'm going, "Oh my god!" So I decided to go back into writing. And um, I ended up making book two that'll be out in February. Book one is going to be re-released with a hard cover. And uh, book three will be out the next following year. And uh, we are really doing a Caesar, uh, Sizzler trailer that we're going to film. And the great part about this is that I put the whole horror genre in there. Um, I, it ain't it, just because it's called zombified. It is more than that. I actually reintroduced vampires, reintroduced Frankenstein, reintroduced oh, cool. Bob yes. Boyle, um, oh, reintroduced. Uh, I even got Bigfoot in it, and uh, it deals, of course, with Area Fifty One. But the whole thing of the book is that there's this guy named Caesar Maldano. Hail Caesar! Hail Caesar! Hail Caesar! Uh, <laughs> so he is a a um, a man that worked in Area Fifty One, the top notch kind of guy. And he has this blood that cures every disease in the world. And what happened is they went after him and they took some of his blood. And of course, you know how science is. Well, we can recreate the blood. We can do a great. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
and there you go introduce zombies and introduced a lot of different effects and um i even got sci-fi in it there's a computer named genesis that um she is in the dark side of the moon a base on the dark side of the moon um, there's more into it man i just i highly i don't want to spoil too much because there's more involvement right um, but it's yeah. a fantastic book for all you people that are love horror and yes. love the paranormal yeah. world um, everything man it is just literally a great thing and of course i ended up writing from that i ended up writing a, a tv show that i'm going to be filming soon called smoke which is a half man and half ghost and it deals with um the paranormal world pretty oh, good cool. stuff, man. awesome man man so I, yeah continue to write man keep yeah. doing it man you know it's interesting because some of that reminds me i've had like an ongoing dream since i was a kid that, that like every time i have it it picks back up like later in my life and it's always been around like zombies and vampires and mostly vampires but werewolves the whole nine yards and it got to the point where like when i was in college all of a sudden I couldn't fight them anymore. Like I had spent a time where I was fighting them. I had to learn how to fight them, but then I couldn't fight them anymore. And then they told me that they had evolved. And so like the next dream, I find this like laboratory where they're like, you know, like testing and, and trying to figure out ways to get the vampires to be in the sun and like all kinds of crazy shit. So yeah, I, um, I literally, I I took that whole aspect. There's a reason why they, they suck blood. There's a reason why, they're, they can't go out in the daylight. Uh, there's some that can. There's some that fly, like the Nighthawks. I nickname them Nighthawks. I nickname oh, them different that's things. That's awesome. But, but you can describe them. Like the Gargoyles, it starts with uh, the Barbarians, which is a wild, they're wild and everything, and then slowly involved into a Gargoyle. So that's my Frankenstein meets the Gargoyles kind of deal. Oh, um, nice. But yeah, it's cool. And then we got my zombies. There's different va- versus of zombies. There's, of course, your typical zombie. Then there's zombies that have a certain portion of memory that, like, hey, man, why does that zombie know how to open the door? Well, there's a reason why he knows how to open the door. He remembers it when he was human. You know, um, it's just crazy mind I have. And and with Kendra putting in it, and then now I got uh, Rick Prince from Sci-Fi uh, Channel's Face Off uh, oh, doing wow. some great stuff. So we're we're getting heavily involved in it, man, and you know we're still filming. There's other projects we're working on now. Dude, I'm excited. You know I'm a big fan, man. I just love your stuff, man. Um, where can people find this? Like, I know on Amazon there's a couple used copies, but where can they make sure you guys get paid? Like, where where can yeah. they go find yeah, this? Um, you know what? Them books. Uh, we're gonna pre-order the new <laughs> books. Um, the the ones in Amazon. The, there's, I mean, those are people that are just reselling them or right. whatever. Um, we, right. we don't, our, the company doesn't put them out or nothing. You can't order them anywhere unless they're used or somebody. But um, gotcha. that's the soft cover. But the new cover and everything, we get pre orders in September and we're going to release it in time for Halloween uh, for everybody. Oh. Uh, actually, maybe the first week of October, it'll be out on the market nice. for you guys to order. And yeah, um, please let us know. We're going to host the hell out of that, man. Yeah. Oh, dude, I appreciate it because yeah. it is going to be a great, great series. Um, I call it my horror, Harry Potter horror style of a book. <laughs> nice. That's right up my alley, man. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that sounds that's what I, that That's what I thought Harry Potter needed was more gargoyles and zombies. Yeah, the, I mean, the Death Eaters and... Uh, I have been um, interested in it. The, um, oh, shit, what, what are they called? The 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 or or the shit, the mentors the, the mentors jesus man yeah. I, I don't even like that's, harry potter that's as scary as it gets and i want more i want more yeah. horror this is this is pretty pretty crazy man um I, like one the whole deal is that this pro that this book carries and covers everything if you're an um, of aliens if you love the movie alien and their trilogy and their movies literally that's what it is is there's there's a sick uh i call it the psych um creature that implants in your head and it lives in your brain and once it dies it po- it breaks out of your skull and it looks for oh, another host <laughs> oh. yeah. so that's yeah, part of the zombie it. part you know 
Dude, yeah. I, love- I mean, there's so much stuff covered on it. You guys got to love it, man. And it's, oh, of yeah. course, I, I don't go out. But the good part is, is this is what I do. I, I kept out and I wanted to make sure that people uh, uh, like age 14 and up can read this. So I yeah. took, I have no yeah. cuss words in it. I have no sex in it. I literally go into the whole science and everything involved in the horror part in it. So don't get me wrong. You're going to see people, you're going to read of heads blown off. You're going to read of intestines being pulled out, arms <laughs> being everything. I mean, it's unreal. And it's, it's like, man, uh, my kid just read this and shoot. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, they they gotta grow up sometime. Yep. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I'm all about it, man. I plan on yeah. getting a copy um, for myself. My sister, who's a big into all the paranormal and monsters and horror stuff, and her son, like he's he's uh, 11, 12, so he's like, yeah. he'll eat this. He'll eat this up. He loves this stuff, man. So uh, yeah, you that's def- awesome. Um, you definitely got some what- pre-orders coming. So. Dude, you, you guys are fantastic, man. I appreciate it. Um, well, I just let you guys know right now. Nobody knows about this, but I have uh, me and a few me and my business partner have signed a deal, and uh, we have um, been contacted by a freelance. Um, I want to make sure I don't say his name because I don't want to spill the beans <laughs> yet about it. Right. But um, he is a DC and Marvel freelance artist and does Archie comics, uh, does the Di- oh, DC wow. and Marvel. And um, he loved the project so much. He goes, man, I can't put this damn book down. And I said, I, I don't know. It's an infection. Yeah. <laughs> so he is gonna, he's going to turn it into a graphic novel. So yes, we're going to actually nice. see it. Also, yeah. Awesome. Even better, but that is man. part of yeah. the deal. When you guys buy the book, you guys get a discount and everything for the graphic novel, and uh, or if you guys just want to watch to get the graphic novel, so forth. But it isn't going to be. Um, I just got the license and the copyright for it, so I'm going to sell toys, um, merchandise, you name it, man. <laughs> You're the George Lucas of the horror yeah, world, now, really. my friend. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want. That's what I want, man. And, and uh, well, right now, as you guys know, I'm big in the paranormal world, right. and um, that that's been something in my life since I was a kid. You know, and as you guys know, most of the times back in the days, I was born in '73 and raised in the '70s and '80s with a church house. I call it the church house because I didn't see a Disney movie till I was 18. I was just yeah. taught the Bible. Um, so being free of, of knowing other aspects of life and religion and, and everything, um, you know, it kind of, it kind of solved a lot of the mystery. You know, I was hearing things when I was a kid, I saw things that I can't explain. Um, it just kept on, kept on. And I think one of the reasons was, is I was a bullied, uh, on my childhood to teenage, uh, even adulthood. And I tried to kill myself five times. Oh, um, so. I literally uh, did everything possible to try to kill myself and it didn't work. And through that time, I've, I've changed my life. I, I put more positive energy. I put more hugs and laughter. And, you know, I opened the door more to people and I've been talkative and try to help other people in their situations. And it attracted, it attracted a lot. Go 10 years ago, I was invited to a house in Lexington, Kentucky from going to a Lexington Comic Con. The house this guy owned, I was given to him and the last time he lived there was in the 1980s. He left that house and left it like it is because it was so haunted that he couldn't do anything. The people that were taking care of it couldn't even enter the house. So when they invited me in that house, the guy ran, opened the door, ran. The group went in there. The, the I was part of the investigation team that invited me. And literally that whole place, we didn't even plug anything in. All I did, I was back in the high ya movement, you know, and I was yelling high ya everywhere I go to scream positive energy um, to the point where things weren't even plugged in and then were lighting up. Um, there was uh, blood coming out of the walls in the basement um, oh from old God. slave tunnels. Um, they had video of a little girl following me everywhere I go. The voice box didn't want to talk to nobody but me, inviting me. I mean, it was clear conversation going in, um, letting pe- letting spirits that were trapped in rooms out. Um, it, it just went crazy. And, and to the point where 
I didn't know what the hell was going on. So I'm <laughs> right. I yeah. met a, a great guy named Keith Age. I don't know if you guys know Keith. Yeah, that's my buddy. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> so, yeah, Keith introduced me to a lot of things. He goes, you're not crazy. This is what I want you to do. And he invited me to some investigation and so forth. And the same shit kept happening, man. There yeah. was lights turning on that didn't have light bulbs. There's, um, I had a, a, I went to old, it's called Old Pennsylvania Hospital in Tennessee. Some, mm -hmm. I forgot the OPH. Um, I went in there and everybody was meeting and greeting. Hey, how you doing? And they, as soon as they turned their vo voice box on, you had two minutes of a full ER visit. You heard the doctors being paid. You heard people signing in. You heard the calling. You heard everything, um, ambulances coming in to the point where the, uh, a lot of the paranormal people freaking dropped what they were doing and just ran out of the house, ran out of the hospital. Oh, my um, God. Um, I went to New York to uh, Rolling Hills Asylum, one of the most haunted places out there in Upper New York, and um, I had uh, there was there was uh, literally orbs coming through where people's cameras went pure white with blindness, and it almost it almost burnt out. I had grids that covered. It starts with a green grid, and all of a sudden it turns pitch black because it was following me everywhere. Um, I had trapped in a in a corner where i was just like man i don't know what's going on you know and people were screaming and everything running out because they were scared as shit they, these, <laughs> was, these are paranormal yeah. investigators that have been in this business for five to 30 yeah. years or so whatever and they dropping their cameras their equipment and running out and next thing you know i pass out in the third floor wake up in the green room on a couch when i wake up i'm going what's going on and everybody jumped like it was a, a horror scene what the hell did you come from? I said, dude, I, I just woke up. I don't know where I'm at. And he goes, you were not there. I just uh, stood up <laughs> from that on. couch. You were not there. Um, yeah, I mean, it could go on and on. Um, and I let all the paranormal people, so I don't want people to think, oh, you're a fraud. You're trying to get, you know, I was like, dude, I'm just an actor, man. I'm just yeah. trying to, you know, yeah. I'm trying to work in the entertainment business. So I let all these paranormal people keep the footage keep all the rights to it and i don't own nothing number one i don't want things to follow me number two i think it's better for them to explain it than for me to explain it and try to make money out of it which i don't so um i could go on with so much stuff but my latest encounter is uh old paulding jail in paulding ohio um i went out there i'm gonna film smoke uh, TV show out there, but as soon as I walked out there, man, I felt every positive energy that was left in that place, and it turned to like they were telling me their story. Oh. And these prisoners, these people were telling me their story, and to the point where I was buckling on my knees and wanted to cry so bad yeah. for them, wanted to scream to shake the planet for them, because they suffered, they got tortured, they got murdered, people were disappearing. Yeah. Come to find out, man, before this lady told me the story, um, uh, after I told her everything, she goes, oh, my God, this is what happened. And she tells me this whole story that matched everything. And I was going, hey, I don't know what the heck's going on, but this is the deal. This is what I'm doing. Yeah, so, yeah, my, man. I'm my sister, too, man. My sister has that same ability. I mean, I've seen some amazing things. I mean, I can feel things and occasionally kind of get something like that, but not like you or not like her. It's it's incredible. It's It's such a humbling gift and i'm glad you're using it for the powers of good <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah you know it, it's you weird man you you bump into a lot of people that do um they're mediums they're uh, fortune tellers gypsies all these people that i never met in my life and i'm going to these horror cons and all of a sudden i pass by there and they're like oh my god i'm going what's going on he goes i need to talk to you there's somebody trying to talk to you <laughs> yeah the, the whole time there's people trying to grab my hand forcefully grab my hand or read my palm and i'm like no yeah. you know um <laughs> along with, with, with it, it, all it, the suicide stuff you know i went to a big tragic event in my life where i lost um my immediate family from parents best friends uh grandparents all within less than five years Wow. To the point where I can't do I can't do open caskets. I can do funerals, but I can't do open caskets. Yeah, you know, so that. so yeah. So I, I I believe in it. I see what's going on, but you know you gotta you gotta control it, man. You can't if you can't control it, it's gonna take over your life and weaken your body because they drain your energy. Mm. Yeah. If you if you don't mind me asking, uh, what do you think 
makes you such like a it, like a a beacon? satellite, yeah, beacon, uh, for lack of a better term, for like all these spirits and things. Um, I believe that because of the amount of suicide attempts, yeah, I think it connects me with the afterlife. Oh shit! I really yeah. do. I really it, do. It could it have, yeah. It could have, it, you know, you could have gotten close and it, it kind of left that door open. Oh, wow. Right, right. Yeah, that's, that's not it's uncommon. I've heard it's, of that before. It's respectful because I, I don't go, the thing about when people, especially the word paranormal, everybody thinks of fear. Everybody thinks of, of something weird and mysterious. You go yeah. to these places with fear and kind of the mysterious like negativity they feed off your energy and if you yep. pitch that you're going to get thrown in a wall you're going to get scratched you're going to get because that's all they read on you i go yeah. in there with a the, high god here we go <laughs> yeah. and they're like oh my god man oh my god yep i will tell you this santiago <laughs> from the last time i got to talk to you on fearscape i take the high seriously man and uh, i did indeed i went into a place and i had a, I, I definitely have friends that call me oh can you cleanse my house can you do this make it feel better and that's exactly like that i walked into this house screaming hi through the whole house burning sage like going to town dude and it was it was intense man and it is definitely something i've carried with me since the last time i talked to you <laughs> Yeah, man. Um, look, um, when I did Rosalie movie, uh, we did the premiere in in uh, where the Walking Dead was created in Cynthia, Kentucky. Right. Um, the Walking Dead family woke, welcomed me with open arms. I was in their Airbnb house. They had their breakfast house and uh, old house and everything. Already, I felt the energy. Once I went to this theater and we did the introduction, and everything. Once the lights went out, immediately somebody screamed and was scratched and they were saging her like they were rolling blunts all over her and oh uh, and it was like oh yeah man she was shaking crying makeup smeared the whole horror effect you know and she goes i don't know what the fuck's going on i don't i can't get this fucking thing off of me da, 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 the whole thing and this you know just and the i told them yeah. yeah in the theater oh my and God, i told them they gave me the history they gave me the history you know slaves were in there black yeah, i mean the whole he, deal and told me a lot about that place man so, I mean, it's just an attraction and everything I do, it leaves that positive energy for months. Um, you know, when I left Rolling Hills, the History Channel came in and did a documentary and they were flipping out. They're like, what the hell was in here? Who left this in here? <laughs> and they were, yeah, the owner was like, thank you. Thank you for leaving whatever you left here because it just went crazy here. They never, never experienced anything like that ever in their life. And, and it's a great, great thing because it answers a lot of their questions. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, well, since we brought it up, let's, let's talk a little bit about Walking Dead. Um, obviously, you know, great show, and it was cool having you on there. Um, and uh, we know one of my favorite things, because I told you I was one of the dudes that signed the petition, was when you uh, got written off the show, it was left yeah, unanswered. <laughs> Say this is what happens. Um, I will sign in for a real turn. Even come back on. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that, and just talk about your experience on the show in terms of behind the scenes, storyline, getting to hang with everybody, and all that. What was that like for you? Yeah, um, the funny thing is, uh, I I was on a roll in acting gigs. I was doing a mini series for Fox in Kentucky, and um, me, Lance. what happened? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I can't hear yeah, you. I was doing a mini series for Fox in Kentucky, and what happened was uh, my agent called me up and goes, "How how quick can you get to Georgia?" I was like, there "Hi," he goes, "Oh my god, oh my god, you're, you're on The Walking Dead," and I'm go, I was paused for him, and I go, "The Walking what?" She goes, "You don't know what The Walking Dead is?" I said, "No, I don't know what the hell it is," and she explained to me. I said, "Really? People like zombie shows again?" You know, because the last time I did zombie, I know the zombie tune was, you know, Night of Living Dead, you know, and then everything right. else was yeah. funny and comedy. So when I get there, I'm hanging out with, you know, Andrew Lincoln, you know, everybody, right. the whole cast and crew. And I'm like, hey, how you doing? And then, you know, I don't know who the hell they are or whatever. 
And they're like, oh, you're that Julio guy. I'm like, uh, yeah. So they give me <laughs> the, the script. <laughs> yeah, no shit. So they give me the script at the last minute, you know, and I'm memorizing lines and so forth. They promised me a reoccurring role. Um, and then uh, that was during the time when they were going through lawsuits, through executive producing and everything. Yeah. So hmm. um, one minute I'm going to be there again. Next minute, you know, no, I'm not. And so I just let them deal with their thing. Um, but yeah, man, it got, you know, from a featured role, there's more, there's scenes there that weren't put in, uh, that I'm more involved in. Um, sure. but you know, it is what it is. Uh, they still got my name. I still got their number. Um, but there's a lot of works with the walking dead. It is still open for me to come back. Um, so yeah. So man, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. And it led me to a lot of great things, you know, doing road and everything yeah, else, you know, it had to be a great experience overall. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just recently we got to talk to Chris Maggard, you know, talking about Rosalie and all that stuff. Um, but which you, like, were great, I, you were great in, by the way. Yeah. Which we'll talk about that yeah. in a second. Cause I want to, I want to talk a little bit more about walking dead. Cause like, you know, you know, those final scenes and stuff are pretty crazy. And it's like, I just can't imagine, and, you know, and I'm an actor, but I've never done anything that big before to just, you know, be around all that makeup and all that craziness. Like that, that had to be nuts. That, that had to be one of the biggest things you had done up to that point. Right. Yeah. You know, um, at the time, Chris hired me as a special guest in it, you know? Yeah. And he knew that you, uh, he he was doing his first film and he was going, you know, like, oh man, my, my lead character went out. I'm asking you, I'll give you a little extra money. I, I said, dude, you already got the project going. Why am I going to bail out? Of course, I'll take the lead role, you know? Yeah, that's what and he told I us. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course. But I had to learn that script, man, within like two weeks. I was there filming. I memorized my lines on set, you know, scene by scene and working it out. And the great part is, is that I slept in uh, uh, Post Town Elementary School. I slept in there for the whole time filming. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah, everybody was freaking out because people that were like, yeah, if you can sleep in there, I'm going to sleep in there. Well, next thing you know, the makeup artist gets thrown on the wall. People get scratched. Yeah, so everybody's hour. moving yeah, out. Yeah. They're, they get a trailer. Some people are, you know, getting hotels about an hour away, and I'm over <laughs> there, you know, sleeping. The the guy that runs the place got attacked. His head was gashed. Um, oh, and then they come geez. in and wake up. They're like, "How do you sleep?" I was like, "Why? I'm feel great." He goes, "Dude, we got a recording of a whole school session right on top of you." Yep. Bell oh, ringing, geez. kids moving around, everything. Yeah, it sounds like we, well. we thoroughly enjoyed it, man. We yeah. watched it and uh, we loved the chemistry between you and the lead. Uh, what was her name, yeah. Jessica? Yeah, Jessica, Jessica. Jessica, oh, man, you, guys, actress, man. you guys had such great chemistry. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine the person he had originally cast even being in this thing. Yeah. And, oh, and dude, that's awesome. This, he even said the same thing to me. He said that it was a godsend having you yeah. because you fit like a key in a lock you know what i mean it, it was just perfect like all, all you guys were perfect and i loved seeing on the chalkboard hi ya back there i was dying <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well i, I just, love that your character by the end of it i genuinely felt bad for him man there's not a lot of people i feel bad for in some of these horror movies but you i was like oh that poor dude <laughs> I was just like, oh god yeah, that's when I get to following a redhead into a horror house, and next thing you know, I'm going, oh, my God, here I go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> hear that, you hear that, kids? Never follow a ginger. It's <laughs> <laughs> you learned it here. You learned it here on Mysteries of the Dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, we loved it, man. And, and this is where I continue to say, man, it's like I have yet to see you in anything I haven't liked, Santiago. You are generally – like not just a talented actor, but your personality shines through in all of that, whether it be on Nashville or whatever. Like I, I just enjoy watching you on screen and uh, it's a pleasure, man. Man, it's an honor. I appreciate it. Um, I've worked hard, man. People told me that I would never make it, you know, and I yeah, jumped I in it at the last minute, you know, and it just kicked off. You know, I'm I'm doing I did a movie with one of my good friends that are Power Rangers that I grew up watching. 
you know, with and, 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 oh. and WWE wrestlers, you know, and I'm doing move, horror movies with them and Sci Fi Channel. Next thing you know, I'm on USA Network, Lifetime, TNT. Hell, I played <laughs> Dodie Fire in the Princess Diana story, and I'm yes. in Puerto Rican. I'm oh. an Arab guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna ask you. I, I noticed. Um, you, on your page and stuff, you were you've been chit chatting and talking a lot about OVW wrestling. What's been going on with that? Is yeah. there anything going on with that? Um, I am. I do a big anti-bullying movement. Most people know is at the Haya Nation, right. um, and yeah. it is just bullying. Bullying to me is not just physical, mental, but it's also carry on to you know we got a bad heroin epidemic. We got people doing yeah. committing suicide. We got a lot of people not, not even believing in their dreams. Do you imagine you got a an intelligent have a, someone that can cure some kind of disease or do something in life that'll change other people's world and you tell them, no, you need to do this. Everybody has to do that, has to express their art, their gift. And I do that. I do it through entertainment. And one of the things that saved my life is comic books and wrestling. And I've been an independent wrestling fan for years before WE. That's us too, You're man. So I go to all these wrestling. Al Snow is a good friend of mine. Yep. Um, man, oh, I yeah. can name everybody in the market that I knew when they were working in garages and everything else, you know, and 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 gyms and stuff. And next thing you know, you know, they're my friends and they're big out there in the market. But I continue to not forget where I'm from, and I know the audience. So I go in there as the High on Nation, man. I'm going to be in SPWA and. Uh, uh, Pocahontas, Tennessee. I do stuff in Mississippi. I got the swag wrestling in Tennessee and uh, Middle Tennessee. I do uh, um, out of control wrestling up there in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Um, there's more, you know, projects I do. But the great things is, man, people feel that vibe. You know, these yeah. people are always like, yeah. dude. You know, I, we I can't even it. sell out a show when I show up and they, and the fire marshal comes in. Hey, we can't let too many people in. Yep. But then the fire marshal ends up enjoying the show and he forgets the numbers. Yeah, that's the same <laughs> thing that happens, man. Like we both do improv comedy and, and stage acting and things like that. And it's like, it's that same thing. It's like that energy is like nothing yep. else, especially yep. when you get that. Yeah, dude, it's it's nothing. Um, I, I host shows. I do live events and host shows. I host for comedy too. Um, I let the I in, I bumped up the crowd. You know, I'm the hype guy, so I right. hype the yeah, crowd yeah, up. Yeah. You no, know? You, yeah. you're the hype guy. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I go in the microphone. They introduce me, and like, Ooh, and I stay silent for two minutes, and I go. There I was, butt naked on a zebra, and all of a sudden everybody goes crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! That's like me, man. Everybody gets me to like open up, open everything, cause I'm I don't give a shit, man. I just want to go out there and raise the energy, make everybody feel good, man. It's it's, it's a special breed. This us. <laughs> yeah, man. So that's that's pretty much it, man. And I'm I'm carrying around and and doing it from wrestling, from live shows. You know, with the Corona thing, everything stopped. Yeah. So right now, yeah. I'm just writing my own tunes. You know, I'm writing. You know these TVs, these movie shows, um, and and you know I've I've been connecting with a lot of stuff for next year, horror cons, paranormal uh, investigations. Um, I'm working on trying to do um, Rosalie and Post Town, do a movie night with Rosalie and Post Town Elementary oh, School. Oh man! And, awesome. um, yeah, so we're we're really trying to do some things, and, and at the same time, my new movie will be coming out soon called Slaughtery. Um, it is a horror, gory, Rob Zombie type kind of deal, man. Um, it is. Um, you had me at some slaughter. of the guys that. <laughs> yeah, it's lottery. It's a it's a lottery, but with a twist. And um, <laughs> I play, of course, I play, of course, a bad guy. Of course, the lead bad nice. guy. And um, what it is, it's it's like a family, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, mm -hmm. but um, with the people that actually saw some clips and stuff of it. Um, they label it up there like the terrifier. Um, so yeah, terrifier we're, we're, was, we're, we're, yeah um, that's kind of the, the crazy minded. My buddy Scott Bainey, who's the writer and creator and runs Scared City Haunted House, which we're going to do a teaser trailer in uh, this year at Scared City uh, out there in Jonesboro, Arkansas. And um, once that trailer comes out, um, we're going to have a... Uh, global distribution all over the market man amazon and netflix all them guys are interested in it but we'll see where it goes 
Oh man, man. that's that's exciting, when, man. When when do you have time to sleep? <laughs> I <laughs> don't, haunted. man. I'm yes, drinking dope. You just, no, you sleep at haunted houses. That's yeah, what. yeah. I'm really, my God, yeah. <laughs> I do all this other awesome stuff, and I sleep at a haunted house. That's where I rest my. That's what I do. Is, um, <laughs> um, I'm that guy that you don't want to bet. You know, you know. Hey, I bet you, you can't sleep here for one night. I said, dude, I sleep in a fart and make the ghost come out. They're like, we need to see this. I have a fart too much. Phew. <laughs> 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 so awesome, man. I mean, what what fantastic stuff, man. I mean, like just since the last time I talked to you, it seems like so much is going on. It was just a few months ago. And uh, I'm excited because, yeah, I feel you with Corona. I mean, that's why we started up this podcast yeah. was to give us more things to do to keep pushing content and be able to still essentially perform. I mean, you know, we got to do what we got to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, check this out. If you guys want to do some comedy get together, I know a guy out in Louisville, Kentucky that has this place called uh, you. Union Station, where at first it was like one of the crazy dive bars and, and comedy place, but he's got it fixed up, he's turning it around, and he does comedy night, karaoke night, and he wants me to boost up the people to come in there, so I'm going to do like a zombie zombie horror kind of theme, Halloween yeah, comedian man. kind of oh, deal. That's awesome. So, um, I'll be more than happy to get you out there, get you guys paid, and I'll host it, and you bring your friends along, man. Yeah, man, we run, a, we run Improv 502, an entire yeah. school of improvisers, and uh, we have a good time, man. So we teach it. Oh, yeah. Farm. So who, who's your friend? Yeah. We might know who they are. Hey, well, Ron. His name is Ron. Ron Holcomb. Mm. His name that is Ron sounds Holcomb. a little bit familiar, but I thought it was going to be somebody. I thought it was this other dude. No, nah, yeah, he, no, he's actually... He just got into the business, you know, and he goes, I don't know why I decided to buy this bar. <laughs> I was like, dude, because <laughs> Corona hit, and all of a sudden, yeah, yeah, you know, he does yeah. live music. This place is freaking jamming, man, if you if people get to notice it. Um, he I'm cleaned the trash out, you know, so yeah. it's all good. Yep. Uh, hell yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm, I just looked him up. I do know who that dude is. Small, small town, man. Small town. <laughs> <laughs> Small town for a big city, man. That's what I'm saying. But yeah, always oh, keep in contact God. with us, man. We're always down for all the stuff, yep. man. And, and uh, yeah, like man, I, I love Kentucky, man. I love the people out there. They always show me love. Oh, yeah, um, there's nothing great. but great love back for you guys, man. Everybody out there in Kentucky. Um, I continue to to do a lot as much as I can to keep you know everybody that that supports me and and does everything because look man i got the talent but you guys make me shine that's how it goes <laughs> oh nice. shucks oh, oh i'm blushing shucks. just just call me polish that's the- <laughs> 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 but uh yeah thanks man i appreciate you like taking your time out i know yes, you're kind of busy you. things are crazy and just talking to us two idiots here we really appreciate Speak for it for yourself man. Okay, one idiot and me. <laughs> um, oh, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. I seem like a traitor. Yeah, shut up. And uh, yeah. no. So, uh, like I said, we will, man, you let us know when that book's coming out for pre-sale on hardcover. Yes, and yes. Novel, Because we are going to share, and I will be purchasing because yep. I'm excited. Yep. And here. anything else, yeah. I'm, always, I'm always sharing your stuff, you know, especially on our Fearscape Media Network uh group page going on and all that stuff man we love you man yep i appreciate it brother you know just you know continue to pass it down share and everything i'm i'm doing a short in kentucky a movie short in kentucky called bully breaker to hopefully give it free for all these rehab centers all these schools all these people that are going into it uh and it's one of them Hallmark type movies that actually has a ending because of a crisis we have with suicide, overdose, depression, and a lot of stuff. Wow, and it yeah. deals with three magical bracelets that change people's lives. And so it's called yeah. Bully Breaker. Check it out, man. Oh, yeah, I'll well, share that for yeah. sure. I'll, I'm, I'll, I've always got my eye on your page, man. So not even worried about that. And uh, before yeah. we get out of here, before we let you go take care of some stuff, is there anything else you wanted to plug or any websites or anything before we go? I, I, anybody can find me, Google me, <laughs> check out the social media, you know, check out Instagram, Twitter, but the main message I put out there is to tell everybody that has this voice, that can hear my voice, man, live life, follow your dreams, yep. always nice. be you. It doesn't matter what the planet thinks about you because it's your life. If you got that talent, if you go to a store and listen to a music dance, 
Dance your ass off. Let people laugh at you. Let people point at you. You know why? Because at that moment, you're more important than what they're going through. And you're giving them a smile. You're giving them a thought. And you're making them be more positive. So express that positive energy and kill all that negativity out of your life, man. I guarantee you, you will succeed. You will succeed more than you can imagine. Because if you save one life, if you save one life, you're going to save millions. Yep, high on nation at its best, yeah. man. Woo. Yeah, so, uh, this portion of Santee Live was brought to you by the High Yon Nation. That's H to the I to the Y to the A to the High Yon. Whoa, yeah! <laughs> I just got blue across the room. Yeah, oh, that's your problem, buddy. <laughs> you don't know nothing about blowing, baby. <laughs> I love you guys, man. I'm going to head out, um, but I want to thank you guys right, for yeah. the opportunity. It's a great blessing, man, yes. having you guys, man. Yeah, same to you, man. So yes, if you want to, you. just go over to that corner over there, and uh, we'll go. We'll just let you out in a second. I am going to kill zombies, walkers, <laughs> or whatever <laughs> you think that's happening with the undead. <laughs> And with that, dear friends, we come to the end of another delightfully disturbing episode of Misters of the Dark. As always, thank you for listening. Thank you to the Fearscape Media Network. And thank you to Corey Adams and Ashley Jones Adams from Nothing Wrong for our musical theme. Now, Lance, in regards to coming up with the money to pay this guy. Tut, tut, Stefan. Remember when I spent that whole summer refurbishing that medieval candle bolt? Yes, the basket, yes! Well, I think right now would be the perfect time to break it in. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, I totally see what you're getting at. Oh, Santiago, you just want a one-way flight to the afterlife! They're starting to leave. Uh, yeah. Oh, boy, I'll tell you this. There won't be any fanboy theories on whether Santiago survived this one or not. <laughs> <laughs> but before we go, dear friends, I'll leave you with this. Always remember, zombies were people, too. Good night. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Misters of the Dark, starring Stefan Gearhart and Lance Wayne, is a production of the Fearscape Media Network. For more information or a look at all of our other podcasts, visit www.fearscapemedia.com.